Okay, so here's the first problem. Many of you have been complaining that when you create the different classification schemes in ArcGIS, it's impossible to have a classification scheme that goes from the lowest value in one map to the highest value in another map. And that's because there's so much variation between the three different maps and incomes. Quite frankly, the federal government pays its employees a bomb load of money. So, um, one issue you've been having is that, for example, with the privately employed people in your lab, um, you're, you're creating a manual classification scheme, but the lowest break you can create is, is um, above the lowest value, and the highest break you can create is just above the highest value, and those values don't vary as much. Well, here's the thing. Um, it's true. You can't create classification schemes that have all of the classes of that, that are needed for all three maps. However, since it is a manual scale, what you can do is create uh, numbers that are the same. And though they will be different colors, because they will color uh, use color value or color hue or whatnot based on the values in each individual data frame map, it doesn't matter. Because when you export it and bring it into Illustrator, you can fix that in a hurry. So first things first, these are three maps I actually literally just exported from ArcGIS. Okay, so I exported them about two hours ago, but whatever. And um, these are heinous color schemes on purpose. They are horrible color schemes, but I, I made them very different on purpose so that uh, you can see what I'm doing here. And so the first thing I'd like you guys to do is you need to know your data and look at your data and see how different your data is. And so we can see the highest value on all of these data sets is 87,348 and the lowest value is 36,140. Now, if we're using color schemes, we know that generally if it's color value, we can only use five different um, color values before people can't tell the difference. Though, if we use a um, combination of color value and saturation or color uh, or value and hue, we might be able to expand that to six or seven. So what I re recommend doing as much as it pains my heart to say so because it's so cliche these days and not because I dislike the site but you know, I, you know it's basically everyone uses it is so I recommend going to colorbrewer.2.org um, to basically find a color scheme that'll work and we'll go from there now in Adobe this is pretty convenient because Color Brewer exports to this so let's go here to Color Brewer hey it pops right up colorbrewer2.org Don't ask about the Benjamin there. All right, so we'll expand this a bit. And up here, we know that we're doing sequential, which is quantitative, but it's a fancy word for that. It's not diverging, that's the main point. And let's say that we can do, um, let's go, let's see if we can find any that are good, a good six, because if we do 10,000 breaks, so the lowest break will be at 40,000, and 40,000, 50, 60, 70, 80, um, yeah, 10,000 will be pretty good. All right. So number of data classes, six, sequential. Let's click here. We've got these nice oranges there. Purples can be good, although sometimes the mid-range purples get hard to see the difference. It becomes hard to see the difference. Green might be a good color scheme because obviously we're talking about money and how much people make. Although greens can be very difficult for people to differentiate. And even here, I'm starting to see how there might be problems. Hmm. A little, little dark, but let's just pick one here. This one's multi-hue, huh? All right, I think I'll go with the green. Or actually, this one might be better. Now, let's go with this one. All right, so actually, do we need, we need one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So we need six. Yep, we'll have six data classes. Let's do it. Now, let's go to, we could just punch these in up here. So if I select, we'll presume this is RGB. If I go up here, I could copy these values. Sorry, I was just interrupted for paper because my daughter's got to put her frozen stickers on something. But um, it's pretty funny, actually. So you could just copy these values in in Illustrator, if you go up here and hold down the shift key and click here, we have RGB, we could just copy those values in. But that's kind of a pain to do for all of those. 
So instead, let's do this. Let's hit export and let's download an Adobe Swatch. So I'll save this to the desktop and I'll call it Brewski. Hit save. And it saves it as an Adobe Swatch. And then in Illustrator, we will go over to our Swatches panel, which is the little rectangular things. And we will go to Open Swatch Library, Other Library. And it's on my desktop or wherever you saved it. That's why I gave it this name, because it was easy to remember. Double click, and there we go. We've got our new color scheme that we're going to use. I'm actually going to hold down the, make sure nothing's selected, hold down the shift key and select all of these green guys. And then I'm going to click on a folder and we'll call this Brewski. And we will drag these guys into this folder. Now, we can close Brewski because these are now saved in our swatches. And when we go up here and click here, they're right here. So already we have the colors we're going to need and they're readily accessible. Step two. Now we have to match up these colors across the maps. This is an eyesore. So, first things first, 36,000 to 40,000 um, is, well, first things first, let's color these into the, we've got to color these into the color brewer. Um, basically scheme, if you will. So uh, this is grouped right now. I am going to, I guess, keep it grouped, but we're going to go back to the layers panel and we only want to be messing with, I believe this is the private employee state. So I'm going to lock all the other layers because we don't want to, we don't want to accidentally select other, um, other map layers. I'm going to keep the legend ones unlocked. All right. So Let's select Montana, that's a 36,000 to 40,000. I guess herding cattle doesn't make that much. Ooh, bad. Okay, and let's basically give this, sorry, let's go up to select and go to same fill color. And now every state with this same fill color as Montana, as well as the legend piece, because it's not locked, have been changed, uh, have been selected. And now we can go here and click on this, and we'll give them the lowest value. Next. All right, next, 40,000. I will select this. Actually, I'm going to ungroup this. No. I'm going to use the direct select tool, which allows you to select within a group. Go to select, same, fill color. All right, let's choose the next puppy. Boom. Ooh, kind of minty. Barf. All right. Next. Select. Same. Fill color. You guys get the point here. I'm not going to say it every time after this. Which one am I on? The third one? All right, so there we go. We've got these ones all lined up. I don't know what this outlier is. I have to admit, I was kind of playing with crappy data. We're just going to lie um, because I apparently missed that when I was prepping this. So ignore. Um, we're just going to give that. Well, what the hey? We'll give it the. Uh, we'll give it the max. All right. So that map is done. Now, if we go down to this one we'll see that it has basically the same data range as the private companies. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lock the private employees version here and I'm going to unlock the state employees one which is the which are these states. Now the 36,000 ones, let's let's go here. We'll use the direct select tool again. And I think I have some legends locked. All right. So we'll select this toxic green. And this value is the same as that value. So we're going to go select, same, 
fill color, mains in there, and then we're going to use the eyedropper tool, which is this little thing. I is the shortcut. It's pretty easy to remember, although eyedropper, of course, is spelled with an E. And we'll click on one of these states. So even though this map is locked here, you can um, use the eyedropper tool to select its colors and features. All right, let's go to yellow. Whoops. Use the direct select white arrow tool. 40,000, blah, blah, blah. All right, select, same, fill color. I'm doing it again. I'm repeating myself. And then we'll go to one of these states. All right. Red is 50,000. All right, select, same, fill color. Now the reason I'm clicking on a state and not the legend is this legend polygon has a gray outline and I like white outlines. The states have white outlines. And if I click on the legend piece, my states and this map down here will also get gray outlines. I want white outlines. So I'm clicking on the states on the map if anyone's wondering why I'm zigzagging back and forth. So I've jumped ahead a little bit and um, basically I've gone through and this one started at 50,000. So I had to start with this color. 60, go to the next, 70, and wait a second, 80,000, they don't exist on the other maps. Well, that's because the private sector and state government would never dream of paying someone over $80,000. Uh, well, actually, that's not true. Don't look at the JMU salaries. However, um, not mine, though. So <laughs> so here's the, uh, the gist. Remember, we downloaded six colors from Color Brewer, and that was for this very reason. So what we'll do is... Um, select the red legend object and go here and go to uh, select same fill color and we're gonna go up here and pick the green that has never been used before and voila there we go we've got all of our all of our uh, maps using the same scale same colors but now we only need one legend so which one should we use um, well, I'm going to use the one that's closer. So what I need to do now is select this again with the direct select tool and holding down the shift key, I can drag these up and then use these green smart guides to line these up pretty darn well. At least I think so. And then I will simply use the regular selection tool to select that group and hit delete. I just love deleting this. Um, and then because this 80,000 is still part of this group, I will control shift G, ungroup it, and then drag around with the arrow tool like that and hit delete, and we are good. Now this group is still grouped, but I wanna get th these little guys with this group. So here's what you can do. You can hold down the shift key and edit cut, double click into this group. Now we're inside of the group, edit, paste in place and now this is also inside the group so if I double click outside of the group and click on this they're all selected but one thing you'll notice is these aren't aligned the the spacing between each of these objects gets a little wonky with the one I added at the end so again let's double click into the group and let's um, select all of these and then if you hit shift F7 or basically the the other place you can find this is window align and you'll be using that a lot in illustrator then what we can do is we can go to distribute objects ooh that looks horrible why does that look horrible because if you go down here to the lower right corner we aligned we distributed them across the entire artboard so let's change this to align to selection and then let's hit control z and then let's hit distribute objects and that doesn't look that good. What the heck, right? Well, the reason is is that these were aligned horizontally as well. Now I'm curious if I select these, I might be able to bump them up with the keyboard. Actually, that works pretty slick. Um, so don't worry about that too much. But here we go. We basically have a legend. I am going. We're inside of a group, so I will double click outside of it. I can move this legend around. It works for all three maps. 
and our deed is done. Next step, making graphs. Thanks for watching.